Let's take a tour of the powerboat section in Punta Gorda Isles. Yo, I'm Adrian, longtime Florida realtor, and I'm here to help you get your Florida life. Happy Wednesday, everyone. If you are new here, new videos come out every Wednesday. This is the second installment in a playlist I'm creating where I take you around a neighborhood in Southwest Florida and really explain the advantages and disadvantages of the neighborhood. I have one that I did before this on Burnt Store Isles and I have many more to come. So check back on the channel or subscribe to follow along. Today we are doing the powerboat section in Punta Gorda Isles. We often call it PGI for short, so you'll hear that from me for most of this video because that's what I'm used to calling it. Now let's get started. Let's start by taking a look at the powerboat section on a map. Punta Gorda Isles is this big bubble that comes out here. All of this waterfront is Punta Gorda Isles, including what I have marked in here. It goes down to Almar right here and cuts off and then goes up through here. That's all Punta Gorda Isles. The powerboat section is this middle part here that I've marked. Now, when I think of the powerboat section, I think of two things. I think of convenience and bridges. And we're going to talk about both and a couple more things as well. But let's start with convenience because we're looking at the map here. The powerboat section is near quite a bit. You have the yacht club here. This is Fisherman's Village where there's dining and shopping. This is the Military Heritage Museum, Visual Arts Center. We have the library and history park where there's not only cool historic buildings, but on Sundays they have the farmer's market. Uh, this is the Hounds of Henry Street Dog Park. This is the Punta Gorda Isles Civic Association. And then up here we have Gilcrest Park. We have um, Carmelo's and a bunch of restaurants and dining. So you're very close to everything here, which a lot of people choose the powerboat section for that factor alone. It is called the powerboat section because of the bridges. And we're going to get more in detail there. But the bridges, just so you know, are right here and right here. So wherever you are on this map, if you're boating, you're either going to go, if you're in the powerboat section here, you're going to go out right here or you're going to go out right here. The bridges are about 13 feet at mean high tide. Therefore, even if you're getting a powerboat, you may still end up in the sailboat section if you're looking for something with a high center console or a bimini top that gets close to those bridges. You really want to be careful there. One advantage in the powerboat section that ties into the convenience factor is you're never very far from open water. You, at max, 15, maybe 20 minutes in some spots, I like to call this with my customers the boat to dinner section because you go out that bridge and you're at Fisherman's Village. It's quite a fun place to be. There's a harbor walk, which is a wide trail that goes up the eastern side of the powerboat section. It's a great place to bike or walk and it leads right up to the water on the harbor down to Gilcrest Park where we have a lot of festivals and fun stuff going on in the weekend. Again, convenience is a big part of the powerboat section. Let's talk about the curb appeal and the type of homes you'll see within the powerboat section. PGI was built from the north to the south, so you do see some older homes in the powerboat section. It does need to follow the same deed restrictions as the rest of PGI, which includes you can't have a detached garage or shed. You have to keep your lawn looking nice. You can't have a fence over four feet and it needs to be see-through in one color. You can't have an RV or a commercial vehicle or a boat trailer in your yard. Now, much like Burn Store Isles, if you watch that video, if you have a cousin or somebody who comes along or you need to wash your RV and need it in your driveway for a couple of days, you can get a permit from the city. It's free 
and you have seven days on that. So when I drive down with customers at certain streets in the powerboat section in the northeast corner, they have something special about them. Can you spot it? It's something different than we've seen in other streets. If you figure it out, put it in the comments below. In the powerboat section, you see not only single family homes, but quite a bit of condos. And you'll see condos of most ages going back 30, 40 years into the 80s. Our newest condos in there are 2007-ish, although there are condos being built around it, so we may get some new condos soon. There are many condo complexes in the powerboat section that have docks, so if you wanna be a condo owner and a boater, you can certainly do that in the powerboat section. Some condos are deeded docks, where you have a dock assigned specifically to your unit, part of your title. Some of them are first come, first serve. It just depends. First come, first serve means that you get a dock assigned to you, but it may not be a specific one. You know, it may not be the same one the last owner had. On the other hand, if you're not a boater, docks do add to the price of condos. You may look at some of the off the water condos that are close to downtown, right off the Harbor Walk. We have some condos that are, were built in the mid 2000s. They can be a great opportunity for those of you who don't need to be on the water. You see single family homes being built around the condos. That is because they the downtown has taken off so much. 20 years ago, the downtown wasn't as nice as it is now. Down, now a lot of people want to live na near downtown, so they will put their houses next to condos. So you see sometimes older condos next to brand new homes. It's subjective whether this is a problem or whether you enjoy this. Everybody has a different opinion on it. Let's talk about price. I get a little pushback and sometimes is when I tell people the powerboat section is less expensive than the sailboat section. Usually I get pushed back from sailors. If you were to take a similar home in the powerboat section and put it in the sailboat section, you would see an increase anywhere from 60,000 to sometimes a hundred thousand dollars, depending on where to give you a basic idea of the price difference. I looked up the median price of a home in the powerboat section. Currently it's 824,900 in the sailboat section of Punta Gorda Isles. It's currently 1,050,000. This is January, 2024. You may be watching this in the future. The point is that there is definitely a difference between the pricing in the powerboat section and the sailboat section. We do see big expensive homes in the powerboat section. However, if you were to put that same home in the sailboat section on similar access to open water, it would be more expensive because you can have a powerboat in the sailboat section, but you cannot have a sailboat in the powerboat section because of those bridges. I hope that gives you a good idea of what our powerboat section is all about. If you have any questions, you know you can always reach out. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next week.